Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Into the Breach. Uh, yes, it's really me, I know you're starstruck, but come on, let's focus here. Uh, so what are we doing? We're, we're playing random today. Alright, so before I click this random squad button, I just want to say, um, I don't want to just slot, just roll with anything it hands us, right? Because we want to we wanna have some success here. We don't. I don't think it's that interesting to watch me play a bad team and just flounder and die. But that said, if we re-roll the random squad an infinite number of times until we get something that's good, that's kind of defeating the purpose, right? That's almost just playing a custom squad. So here's my plan. I'm going to hit random squad here, and if I don't like what we see, I'm going to let myself re-roll it up to twice. That's where we're going. If, you know, if, the, if that final squad is uh, terrible, we'll just play it. A uh, little push your luck action here. <clears throat> so, actually, you know what? We're pretty much just trying to make it to the end of Island 4 here, right? To get grid defense up to 30%. So, I'm pretty sure when you click on the thing, it gives you a balanced roll, which is all mechs are unique, no me no two mechs from the same class. Uh, why don't we hit chaos roll? This is going to be our first real team that we're going to examine here. So with the chaos roll, it's just completely random, no, uh, no restrictions. This squad is actually, I think, maybe too good i mean i don't i don't want to turn i don't want to turn them away because they're good but it's just it's a little it's a little too similar to just playing flame squad i actually, I actually think this squad is probably better than flame squad because rocket mech is very good and he has the storm generator let's let's go back to the well this is reroll number one here okay here's a weird thing so the acid projector the cluster artillery and the mirror mech yeah, that's a weird team. That's a good weird team. So let's figure out what pilot we might want here. The mirror mech is super fun to use. Cluster artillery. So... We could just keep rolling with uh, with Abe. Armored plus a reactor is a pretty good start. And this squad is pretty soft. There's 7 HP between the three of them. So yeah, maybe, uh, maybe a little bit of armor might be a good idea. Although, if we have Visser and Nanobots, maybe we don't need the armor so much. Who else might we might we take in? Well, Ariadne will get us uh, <laughs> will get us less squishy. That's for sure. Of course, we could take the Zoltan again because uh, the mech we put him in won't actually be losing very much health. So we basically get minus one HP on one of these mechs, but also plus one reactor. That sounds pretty good. It's uh, we keep going back to this same well. That's a little, that's a little lame. We should probably try to. Can we random this? Can you random your? Here you go. This is how you do random squad. Bam, Harold Schmidt. Ugh, I don't love Harold Schmidt if I'm being perfectly honest. But hey, random squad. So our goals for today, well, over the next couple episodes probably. Open five time pods. If we go to the end of Island 4, I think this should happen. And get to 30% grid defense. So we need to be very careful about losing power. We need to make sure we're getting maximum rewards on each island. Um, but I mean, basically this just comes down to be good at the game, which I sometimes can do. I can occasionally do that for two, maybe three islands in a row. All right, are these breaches causing damage to the timeline? You know, that's actually a real good question. I don't know how sturdy the fabric of space-time is, but something tells me that we would break before it does. So as long as we're still here, I feel like we're okay. Uh, what, what order? So we're gonna have to do all four islands, right? What is the order for this team? Our damage output is not stellar. So it might be important for us to do detritus toward the end, just so that we have extra sources of uh, armor available, or extra sources of acid. We do have an acid launcher by default. Okay, so armor island here, the, the armor scion. This might be a real problem for us. Blast scion is always an issue. So I think we should do one of these two first. Let's do archive, because I really think the armor scion is going to be a real pain for us if we're dealing with him while also fighting difficult enemies. 
All right, well, obviously we want to do a bunch of these. It sort of doesn't matter how we do this. Like, we could do Chronology Hall and then wrap around to grab a bunch of these, or we could go through Old Town. Chronology Hall has us defending the train. The Siege Mech can shoot right on top of... Yeah, the Siege Mech can shoot right on top of the train to push stuff away from it. We should be able to do this. Don't worry, Dewey. We'll protect Ol' Horus. He's apparently invaluable to the cause. We gotta get some, um... We can get some new weapons, though. That's gonna be pretty important. Okay. So... We can use this guy to kill his partner if we can push him from below, which we can do. So right, we can have the Siege Mech fire here, like move to here, fire here. And if we have the Nano Mech hit this guy with the acid first, this attack will be lethal. And then we just like, sh you know, we just shoot this guy. I think that's a pretty good plan. Here's the question, do I want to sacrifice one health on my artillery mech to get the kill here via this push. I think I think probably the answer to that is yes, right? Take this shot. Oh, his projectile uh, pushes. I was thinking it was like the acid tank, where it just did the acid at first, and then the, the push comes later. Uh, that being the case, then we can't... Okay, this still this actually still works. Oh no, this won't work. I was gonna say we could just push this guy up here and then have the acid uh, mech push them together to deal one damage to him to soften him up for the hit. But if we do that, it'll uh, it'll actually kill this guy. So I guess we're just gonna take the less satisfying tack of pushing that guy out of the way. That's a lot less fun. Sometimes I wish you could toggle the pushes, you know. Yeah, this time I would like you to shoot it so that he doesn't push. Land the shot right in front of him. The acid will still spray up. You know, maybe Harold should be driving one of the mechs that only has two health. Okay, the good news is, with this guy being covered with acid, he is trivial to kill. Hmm, but I do have to be a little careful how I do it. Because we can't use the siege mech to clear the hornet. Because if I fire here, we're going to do damage to the train. If I fire here, we're going to do damage to this building by pushing him into it. So this this has to come from the mirror mech, or we have to have the nano mech come over here and just push him this way. I think it's not a big deal for the mirror mech to, <clears throat> excuse me, to come up here and do this. And then we can drop an artillery shot from the siege mech, like, here. Yeah. Right, so we fire like this. It's a kill and a push. The tank moves after, or the train moves after all the enemies have taken their shots, so we don't have to worry about the scarab killing it. And then, like, you just... This is kind of awkward, because the best version of this is these two switch spots, which unfortunately is not a thing that you can do. So, like, the question then is, do we just finish this guy off and go ahead with pushing the Hornet out to here? You know, probably. Because this allows us to keep blocking the spawn and none of the other moves do. This is, a, this is such a good game. I really, really like this game. I don't know if I've made that clear to everybody. Okay, so, shot right here is not terrible. I figured out how I want to do this. Um, Harold really needs, yeah, Harold's going to need help here. I was trying to figure out if there was a way that we could just, like, shoot this guy off and then maybe push one of them so that they can be slammed into each other. What are they, What's the attack order? This one's attacking first. So if we push him down... 
and then we slam them together. That's it's still not enough damage. Okay. So we probably want to drop the shot right here. Obviously, we can't do it here because it kills the train. And once again, the nano mech, due to uh, having four base move and flight, can just push this guy out of the way. XP does matter. And the way we're setting it up doesn't look like we're going to get a, any kills, maybe? Yeah. It's a shame. Well, hold on. Oh, you know what? I actually don't have a shot on this space. Right? Because if I stand here to take the shot, this guy won't actually move. And as such, he won't be... Uh, the, the web won't be broken. I could just repair in place. Which pushes with Harold. But that means I definitely don't get to kill either of them. You know what? We're going to generate enough XP over the course of the game. I think I'm fine with this. So is there... <clears throat> Is there a good kill opportunity here? I just, I move here. Yeah. That's a little bit of XP for us. And you don't get to do anything fun. Here, set this guy on fire. That'll show him. Yeah, I think this team has potential. Do not kill the Volatile Vec or take less than three grit damage. I, I don't really like the Volatile Vec mission. I try to avoid it whenever possible. Alright, so remember. Uh, Vec that are uh, suffering from acid, Vec that have the acid debuff, do not benefit from armor. So we will be able to use the, uh, the, the acid to disable one Vec's armor per turn. If they don't give us any other option. It looks like we are maybe going to have some other options here. I'm trying to figure out what the best way of dealing with this guy is. It's probably... Like an artillery shot here pushes him into the mine. So we clear this guy out by pushing him onto a mine pretty easily. In fact, we can do that from either here or here. But I want it to be from here because this is maybe the spot where we're going to be taking that shot from. Unfortunately, this Vec is um, awkward to deal with. Let's see, I can't use the Mirror Mech to deal enough damage to kill this Hornet. I'm just thinking that an artillery shot to here or here is lethal for the Shell Scion, and then once we've killed the Shell Scion, we can use the Mirror Mech to kill this guy. Oh, that's right, that doesn't work. So there's actually... The only way we can push the Shell Scion onto a mine without damaging a building is to fire a Siege Mech shot to here, but this Hornet can't be here anymore. Otherwise, it'll be pushed into the building. All of which is to take the long way around to say that I'm not sure we have this dude. Oh, no, wait. Okay, I just saw it. Because our repair pushes, you can do this to clear you out, and then I can just have Harold repair in place. Had to get rid of the Vec first, or the, the Hornet, but yeah, that works. I gotta remember, that uh, that repair push thing is uh, turning out to be already way better than I was giving it credit for. Okay, so we can push both of these enemies off pretty easily. Unfortunately, nobody's in a position where I can um, super easily push them onto a mine. If we move this, uh, move this Alpha Scarab up... Like with the nano mech, then we fire an artillery shot to here, move this guy out of uh, out of the way, and it'll smack this guy into this mine. The question is, where's the mirror mech when I do that? I guess maybe the mirror mech's right here. All right, we'll just use uh, push damage to kill this thing, and then uh, and then we'll have the move to come down here and shoot this guy off to the side. 
Yeah, I like that plan a lot. So you push here. There we go. It's important to remember that mechs are huge and made of metal. Frankly, I'm kind of surprised that there aren't more mechs whose whole plan is just to hurl themselves bodily at the enemies. Hmm. So, we could just move to here and repair so that we won't don't get killed. We could also try to gin up a, an actual killing blow to get that healing. So you got to remember we have access to this uh these nanobots. These are pretty good. I'm not sure that I see a play that's better than move here and repair, though. How do we deal with this guy? He's in actually kind of an awkward spot for the siege mech. This thing where... Any place where there are two buildings adjacent to each other, the siege mech's job gets more difficult because he has to... He can't shoot directly onto one of them without damaging the other. Uh, unfortunately, we actually don't, we really don't have a lot of ways of dealing with this dude. We can push him from below with the nano mech. He ends up here and then we do have a shot on him, but it'll only do two damage. And I still don't have a, I still can't push him away from the buildings due to the way the siege mech works. But I could push him from below twice. Nano mech and then mirror mech. And then um, the siege mech can just shoot here to push this guy onto the spawner. It's not great in that it doesn't actually kill any of the enemies, but Well that's not true. It'll this guy will this guy will die when the spawn happens. But it's pretty important that we preserve power here. Yeah, this is... It's awkward, but it does prevent us from taking any damage this turn. I'm going to move forward a little bit here, just in case. This gives me access to a... What I think is a slightly more valuable row. Now, unfortunately, the, da the attacks will destroy those mines, which means that we just don't have access to those anymore. We're going to end up with four enemies for the final turn, and only one of them is meaningfully injured. Yeah, not good. Alright, uh... This is a lot of enemies to have to actually deal with. This does deal with two of them at the cost of one building damage. And we don't actually have to stop this guy's attack, though. So if we just ignore him, can we... Can we make it out of here? This shot kills that guy. It reduces our mech to one health, but then heals him because he killed that, which means he'll still survive this. Ah, uh, but because we're all over on this side of the map, the siege mech is the only one who can deal with this. So, and it's not going to be a kill when he does it. That's actually a real problem. So, the, the two issues here. The Siege Mech is the only one that can deal with this uh, this Scorpion over here. And the only ways that we have to deal with this uh, Scarab, I think the only way we can deal with this is to, is to slam it into the Siege Mech. Right, because we can't push it anywhere, we don't have any pulls. Yeah, and if we slam it into the Siege Mech, the Siege Mech's pilot dies. And the Siege Mech's pilot is the one who has all the XP, so that would be kind of a bummer. Now, granted, we might end up replacing this guy anyway. In theory, 
Over the first two islands, we should be able to put together two perfect islands, thus gaining two new pilots, which means that both of our zero skill pilots will uh, will be replaced. So maybe it's not that big a deal to lose this guy in exchange for maintaining our power. Yeah. It's going to mean that this mech is running without a skill for a little bit when it otherwise wouldn't, right? Because he's going to level up quickly. But maybe that's the right thing to do. So we just have somebody push this guy up, push this guy into the... Uh, Right, like, do this. Yep, yeah, I'm just going to sacrifice the pilot. There might be a better play, but I don't see it. And I think that this pilot is comparatively low value. I mean, that... <laughs> that sounds and feels like a horrible thing to say. But you know what I mean. Alright, Pierre. We dedicate the rest of this run to you. I think we're going to move Anna over into this other mech. The nano mech is the one that's going to get the least XP. So, no sense having a pilot there, but no pilot in one of the killy mechs. Oh, hey, the dam. I like the dam mission. I'm going to put the mirror mech over here. Figuring that probably what we're going to want to do is shoot at stuff in these rows while also damaging the, the dam a little bit. And sadly, I don't think there's any way to manipulate the targeting of scarabs. They can shoot at pretty much whatever they want to shoot at, so... Okay, how do I want to do this? This looks like a pretty obvious shot, right? Well, I was about to say, then, and then we clean it up with the uh, mirror mech. But if we're going to kill this thing with the mirror mech shot, we probably want to take the mirror mech shot first. And then just use the siege mech to push the mirror mech, or to push the scion into the scarab for the kill. Because that will actually deal one damage to the scarab. Although, actually, the Siege Mac has to be the one who deals with this, doesn't he? Because we don't have any other way to stop this guy from hitting a building. What we really need is to get somebody up to two damage so we can actually kill stuff in a single hit. Like, I, like, I think this has to happen. Oh, that's bad sequencing, though. Because we're still going to kill the Shell Scion this turn, so I should I should have led with that. I think we're going to do this. Yeah. So if I'd done that in the other order, this guy would have one damage on him. Also, I should move the siege back to here before firing that shot. Uh, you know, we still have the nanobots. I'm not too worried about the siege back going to one. I do not think this is worth spending our reset on. Lord knows I will screw up in a worse way than this later in this mission. <laughs> and I would very much like to have the, uh, the reset available for that. Okay, so this turn we can, uh, we can proc the... Or we can proc. We can blow up the dam. Hmm. But do I want to? We cannot blow up the dam and also prevent all the building damage. And I think it's more important to prevent all the building damage. Let's get you ready to actually take some damage. And then... I think I would rather deal with this guy with the siege mech so that we can block a spawn. Nope, see, I'm not thinking my, thinking out my whole turn before I do stuff. Uh, Harold, well, no, okay, Harold can still push this guy. Yeah, that's all right. This way ends up with us dealing one less damage to the vac, but I know it doesn't, because this guy takes the damage from blocking the spawn. So yeah, this, this is definitely a better plan than having Harold deal with this guy and the siege mech deal with this guy. 
Because we end up with a spawn block. Come on, yes. Ground based ground based enemies, please get in front of the dam. No! You fool. You fully justified, prudent fool. Okay, that's pretty good. And then we just need to move, uh, need to move Anna out of the way here. Notice that time I was thinking and moved far enough back that I don't get hit by the attack afterward. I guess, actually, I made another mistake there, too, huh? If I'd blown up the dam and then done the push with the acid mech, the acid mech would have healed for one. Because its shot was a kill. Yep, that was definitely an error. Unforced. Wholly unforced. Ah, this is awkward. The mirror mech cannot get up here to kill this thing. I really want to kill the Alpha Hornet, because it has a lot of XP. It's just, it's just packed with experience points, but... No, wait, I totally can. Right, because... No, I cannot. We have to use the Siege Mech to deal with this. Because the Mirror Mech can't get around to the other side. Which actually means that the Mirror Mech can't do anything. Unfortunately, all of these water spaces prevent us from taking actions... Ooh, so we're taking building damage. And there's no way to prevent it. Somewhere we're going to get hit for one, right? Because unfortunately, I've left Harold in a position where he does not get to contribute this turn. So that being the case, we can just go ahead and kill the Alpha Hornet. Yeah, right, I don't see a way to deal with all this because there's no... Harold has no actions. The only thing he could do, man, if he just had one more move so that he could move here, he'd be able to kill the Scarab in one hit. There's no way for me to set that up, is there? No, I don't think so. All right. Yeah, I think unfortunately we are eating a building damage here. Well, it's not the end of the world. The Herald actually does not, <laughs> does not get to do anything at all. If this thing only had two health, I would absolutely just shoot it into the building. Take the one damage that we we're going to take anyway, but get the XP. It having three health is a little awkward. We gotta, the first thing we're doing with reactors is we're upgrading the damage of the mirror mech. Provided we ever see a time pod, I'm starting to get a little worried that we won't. Oh, defend the artillery support. We can actually, we could use a little bit of fire support, frankly. We're having a really hard time with the killing and everything. So I'm thinking if we run the nanomech here, we're more likely to be able to push stuff into the water with it. But if we run the mirror mech here, we're more likely to get a shot where we get to hit two things, right? If the mirror mech is off to the side, he's much more likely to, he's much less likely to be able to get a double hit. Okay, time pod, finally. That could have happened a little earlier. That would have been alright. Okay, so I do believe we can kill this thing this turn, actually, thanks to the high damage of the artillery support. So first we have to kill the, uh, the armor scion. Grab this, push you out to here, where you take double damage from the two damage artillery support. Bam, easy. And then just put a little bit of damage on this guy. Oh, no, wait. I have already done one damage to him. We will just kill the heck out of this guy. That's like a pretty successful first turn. The artillery support is he's good people. All right, well, at least the Vec are coming up into the fire. That's helpful for us. So the artillery support only has one move. And as such, uh, cannot participate hugely. We could push the Scarab 
into his path. As far as freeing our siege mech goes, I think this is the only play. And then we can push the Scarab to here, and instead of giving that kill to the artillery mech, we can uh, move the siege mech such that we fire a shot here, killing this guy with damage and doing another one to him. But I should move in, because I want to potentially be able to push enemies out toward the water with the nano mech on future turns. So actually, if I put myself here, now we're getting a kill on both of these guys, and we're getting it on an actual pilot. Whereas killing stuff with the artillery mech just spreads the XP out evenly, which means some of it will be lost on the AI unit, probably. That's awkward for us. Okay. So, we can actually get the, uh, the nanomech back there. Okay, how about this? We can block this spawn while still killing this thing. We can use the nanomech to soften this guy up. And this guy will die to the fire damage because he came up through the fire. Oh, does XP doesn't get distributed to the AI unit and then lost the way it does to pilots who are at full XP. Did you see that it was three XP and two of it went to Harold and one went to Anna. So I guess that's not actually a concern. That's good to know. Uh, how do we want to deal with this? So this kill would leave... I guess I'm going to do this in this order. So if we do this, this means that Harold actually gets this kill. And then this guy's dead from fire damage. So we don't have to do anything else. Okay, that was a pretty successful uh, little mission there. I really like the artillery support. Yeah, okay. AI pilots do not leech XP. That's nice, because it would have been uh, it would have been really easy to have them consume some of the XP the same way that a maxed out pilot does, but it would have kind of been kicking you when you're down, because if you have an AI pilot, something has already gone wrong. All right, let's see if we get lucky. Ah, just a reactor core. That's fine. And Harold got plus two HP, which is actually a pretty useful skill given the way we're positioning here. I think I am going to keep him on the mirror mech. And plus one damage. Ah, oh, I'm ecstatic. Alright, we got our Firefly leader here. So now that we have a two damage mech and a source of acid, our, uh, our kill prospects are vastly improved. How do we want to position here? I think, as usual, we probably want to try to have the mirror mech sort of in the middle of things. We want to give the siege mech access to a column and a row as best we can. And then, yeah, the nano mech would it would be best if we could push stuff this way. Oh, that's right. This is the guy who shoots in both directions. That's actually a big problem. That's actually like a huge problem, though. Uh, how are we gonna deal with that? Well, we could probably shove him in the water. So, like, if we, right, do something like this, and then have the nanomech fly over. Ah, uh, but I can't. Uh, this is, this is really bad, actually. Okay. I could have Harold repair in place. Oh, it pushes all adjacent tiles, not just enemy tiles. The problem is, if we have... Anna shoot this tile 
this is the only spot she can do it from, and she'll die. Unless we also move this guy somehow. And this, um... Shoot, man. This damage upgrade is a real mixed blessing here, because if we were still at one damage, it would be feasible for us to do this. And then you have one damage on you, but the enemy has been pushed to here and no longer hits you. As it is, I... Well, I guess it would have been a kill anyway, right? Because it would have done one damage, but also pushed her into the building. So never mind. Wow, this is very bad. I don't really have a lot of other shots. Alright, let's just let's just slow down a little bit here. Really think this out. So part of the problem is that Anna has no way of affecting these enemies without also damaging buildings, except for shooting right here. Or like shooting here to push uh, to push this thing up into Harold. We can kill... we can kill this Alpha Hornet. Right, if I do this, that thing takes two damage and is on fire. Then we bring the Nanomech down here. Well, I was going to say, we bring the Nanomech down here, do a push to slam this into the Firefly Leader, and that gets us the kill from burning damage, which means... Harold can run off and do something else. However, we could also just do the acid thing first, which would make the Siege Max attack lethal, which then lets Harold out. Harold can get into this space and do a push. No, that's a terrible push. Um. What if... Okay, here's the problem. This is the best space for us to shoot, right? With the Siege Mac. But we have to do it from here in order to be safe. And the problem is that I just don't have the range. What if I gave myself the range by using the Nanomech to push Anna? Or even, even using Harold to push Anna with his repair. Because almost nothing is actually attacking buildings. So what if we... What if we... Harold comes up here, pushes Anna to here. Then she goes one, two, three. Has this shot, which pushes the Firefly Leader out to the side. And then we still have the Nanomech able to come over and push the Firefly Leader. That doesn't... Uh, it doesn't injure either of these enemies at all. But the Firefly Leader ends up with one damage and acid on it. Pushing into the water won't kill it because it's massive, as all leaders are, but it will uh, it will take a little bit of damage, and while it's in the water, it can't attack, much like Armax can't. So then I guess the, the, uh, the next question is, do I want to execute that hit from here or from here? Because we could push, we could repair in this space, pushing Anna to this side, and then she could do it from here. I think this is probably better, this gives us... Uh, an axis that has uh, an axis that has access to more of the battlefield. All right, I think that's the plan. Harold, your push repair is uh, turning out to be way better than I was giving it credit for. Okay, this does set the <laughs> the dynamic on fire, which is a thing we're gonna have to deal with. And now we have four enemies in addition to the leader. This is a bad scene, man. Yeah, wow, this sucks <laughs> a lot. Uh, how do we deal with this? How is it? How are their spawns? You are... You're killing me, game. Okay. Let's think here. So, if I sacrifice these buildings, 
by pushing the Firefly leader into this space somehow. Kills these buildings, but he also kills this guy, which is a lot less valuable once these buildings are dead, I guess. Alright, I'm just trying to figure this out. So a... You're not actually dangerous. A siege mech shot to here pushes you into the water, pushes you into this space, which is not very helpful. What is our poor mirror mech going to do? The mirror mech could move to here and repair. Actually, the way these buildings are set up almost couldn't be worse for us. There's almost nowhere that the that the mirror mech can fire safely. Let's see. A siege mech shot to here pushes you out to a position where you're not doing anything meaningful, pushes you back into the water, which is fine for preventing your attack, but doesn't really help us with the actual killing. That would let our mirror mech move as far as this space, which I guess at least gives me a shot on Firefly leaders covered in acid, which is fine. But it doesn't deal with any of the enemies. Oh yeah, this also does damage to that building. Although, if I don't think I'm going to be able to save the building, if I don't think I'm going to be able to deal with this guy, then da dealing damage to this building doesn't actually have any meaning, because it was going to get destroyed anyway. You know, the more I look at this, the less I hate it. Then we move the mirror mech into here, shooting both these ways which kills this guy, bounces him off the siege mech, so the siege mech takes one damage, which is unfortunate. Uh, and then also actually does kill the Firefly leader. And then we we lose a ton of power, because this both of these buildings are dead and one of these is as well. But it really does lower the number of enemies. And it means we can move the nano mech out to here and repair. Yeah. There's probably a better play, but I don't see one. Right, because like shooting onto this building kills this guy, but doesn't it makes the situation much worse with the Firefly Leader, because now the Firefly Leader has four buildings around it and we can't really interact with it in any other way. Remember, the Nanomac has to repair this turn or we lose it for the rest of the battle. I think this is right. It sucks, but it's right. Then you move to here. Prepare yourself. And you move to... It doesn't really matter whether we do this from here or here, I think. Yeah, we could allow this thing to just burn to death, but I, I do not want to pass up the opportunity to get this kill. We're going to lose a lot of uh, a lot of power, but we'll have an opportunity to make it back. It's going to be a long game. Okay. So it's nice to be able to do two damage, right? We can just we can kill this Alpha Hornet very easily with the Mirror Mech. Uh, an artillery shot to this space solves a lot of our other problems, and then we just repair in place so as to block a spawn again.
Okay, we took a lot of power damage there, and maybe it wasn't necessary. I think that second turn was really rough because of how bad our first turn was, but I also don't know that our first turn could really have gone better. Uh, at this point, it doesn't actually matter if the nanomech dies. How do I want to do this? Probably what I want to do is move the mirror mech over and get this kill. And then let Anna handle this. Okay. Yeah, not the best first island we've ever had, but <clears throat> it is perfect. All right, that's a nice upgrade. So, there's a projectile that hits two tiles, pushing them in opposite directions. That is neat, but I think we really want a pilot. Also, Mecha Games Armored is, is nice. We almost brought him, so I'm pretty happy to have him. I think we're gonna bounce Anna uh, back to the, back to this thing. Well, you know, actually, I'm trying to think, like, armor Armor actually only protects you from weapon damage. So maybe Abe's not that useful in this thing because this thing spends a lot of time away from enemies. Yeah, let's, let's keep them as they are, I suppose. Why do I keep doing them? I'm dragging them to the wrong square. So let's talk math a little bit here. We need to gain 15 grid defense. So we need to do this. Uh, we need to drop power into the grid while it's at full a significant number of times. <coughs> Man, that confused shot could be good. So basically what I'm saying is I'm a little worried that we may not be able to buy as many reactors as I usually like to buy. Ooh, the cryo launcher is pretty cool. Boosters are also pretty cool. And you know, the boosters would be good for the mirror mech when it's having one of those turns where it can't fire safely. I think we're going to go boosters and a pair of reactors. But we're going to have to think very seriously on the next couple of islands about whether we have to take uh, just focus on taking grid bonuses over everything else with our reputation. So who gets these reactors? This, I think, is pretty compelling. We've had this, this problem a lot. The only other thing we would really do with them is start saving up for a third point of damage on the cannon. Or start working toward more healing, which I don't think we really need. And the next time we get a reactor for Anna, um, well, the next time we get a reactor at all, we can consider taking Anna's move away to give another plus one damage here. Yeah, all right, that's not too bad. Well, let's keep going. It's going to be kind of a long video today, I suppose, but I don't, uh, I don't want to do just one island. We have a lot of stuff left to do. So detritus toward the end, I think, makes sense. RST is going to be a real pain. Yeah, these, these are both going to suck. Well, Pinnacle's probably slightly easier than RST because there's a lot of missions where you get to take advantage of uh, freezing. So let's do RST next. I don't like that very much. Although, we're going to have an easier time destroying mountains while killing enemies with this squad because we have things that deal damage in uh, two groups of tiles. But why don't we go for... I kind of think we need all the rewards we can get here. Yes, yeah, so why don't we go for this? So, bonus health scion is annoying, but... I think something we can deal with. Maybe it would have been better to wait until Anna had access to that extra point of damage. I mean, what am I thinking? We're going to see this thing on every level, so...
Okay. So using the mirror mech to just run down here and fire on both of these seems like a pretty obvious play. Yeah, it's not it's not really too difficult to clean up quite well this turn. We have to do this before we push this guy back. And then the siege mech probably should have uh, gone earlier in the turn. <laughs> because, unfortunately, we can't fire here. So we have, to, we have to shoot here, which does a considerable amount of damage to Harold. But you know what? Harold will be fine. And actually, this dealing one damage here may be uh, meaningful. Right, because after the spawn block, this thing's only going to have two health. Which means that a hit from the siege mech will be lethal for it. Oh, I hate these things. I hate these things so much. Okay, that was nice of it, though. Hmm. So if we use the nanomech to push this thing down, we have an easy, uh... An easy double kill with Harold. But it doesn't leave me with a lot of good ways of dealing with this guy. Oh no, it does, because buildings are now immune to damage from the cluster artillery, so this shot is good. Yeah, so we will uh, push you down to here. Harold gets all his HP back. This isn't totally ideal, but... And hey, look at that! We're already using our armor, because this would have killed uh, the nanomech if it wasn't armored. Yeah, that's not bad. All right, I do love leapers. Let me think. I could come down here. Now that we do two damage... We can kill three health enemies with a shot and a push. So I'm trying to figure out how we deal with this situation without enabling this guy to shoot a building. Because again, what I really want to do is shoot here, right? I'm assuming that... Let me test something. Yeah, we will do, still deal damage to the Renfield Bombs. They are friendly. They are considered to be friendly units, not friendly uh, buildings. So. They're not massive, so I think we don't want to push it into the water. Which means that, unfortunately, Harold doesn't, doesn't actually have a shot on this thing. I could use... The nanomech to move the bomb and then I could use I can just move the nanomech and then have Harold booster into this space, which would push the na the bomb out to safety, smack this guy into that guy, and also mean that Harold is just eating the shot with his huge amount of health. That's not too bad. So the question really then is where does the nanomech want to be? And the nanomech can just come down here and repair on this space to block the spawn. Push all that out. And then... Not really sure what we do with the siege mech at that point. Okay, so siege mech shot to here is pretty good. Maybe this is what we do instead. Because this gets us a spawn block with an enemy. A fair amount of damage on that guy. And in fact, we could do this. This kills our spawn block. 
But it also kills an enemy. I don't really see a lot of other good plays, unfortunately. Oh, 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 okay, hold on. What if I move to here? Oh, I was about to... I was about to say move to here and then booster jump to here, pushing this guy onto the spawn, which blocks the spawn and kills him. But that also pushes the bomb into a place where the bomb really cannot be. Oh, but I could just... No, I cannot. I was going to say I could just come here and, and do my repair instead of the jump, but that actually is exactly the same play. Uh, it doesn't feel right to do nothing, but it kind of seems like I got to do nothing. I definitely don't want to take a shot. I mean, no, probably probably the right thing to do is just come here and, and obliterate this guy. There's no sense in letting him live. And you, I guess, can just acid this guy up in preparation for next turn. Take that, unnatural rock formation. That is an unauthorized rock formation. Think of how mad Silica would be about that thing's existence. Alright, well, this seems like kind of a no-brainer. Trying to think of how I kill this guy. Because we can push this guy into the water pretty easily. The question is just, can I also kill this one? Or do I have to settle for, like, having the nanomech push him up a square? Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm just, I'm just going to settle on that. So we'll push you into the water for the kill, and then... Yeah, all right. Not bad, and more rewards is always better. Except for all the times when it isn't, I guess. Kill at least seven enemies. But you know, we have access to some water. I think we can probably do this. And we do really need the power. It's nice to have a flying mech. Let's put ourselves... Let's put our flying mech here in the hopes of making the enemies want to shoot in this column rather than this column, which would be very unfortunate. All right, that's awfully welcome. It's one of those pods. <laughs> Good looking out, Anna. Hey, guys, look, I think that pod is a pod or something. All right. Awkward. Okay, so Harold's jumping is probably going to be pretty important this turn. He can't really affect the field in too many ways. But he can certainly jump somewhere meaningful. So we don't have to kill this guy this turn. But I probably want to, because I hate them very much. Let me think here. We could... We push this guy into the water pretty easily. You just you have to be moved up or down or left or right. They'll all work for disabling you. No, sorry, not left. Up or down or right. By the way, up is here for me. You probably can tell from the way I'm saying rows or columns, but I was watching another person play this game on uh, YouTube recently, and they were conceptualizing this as the up-down axis, which just blew my mind. It is 100% as valid as the way I'm doing it, but it just felt so viscerally wrong to me that I could barely even process it. All right, so like it's, it's pretty easy to just like have the nanomech do double duty, right? Stand here, absorb this shot for zero damage, which is fine and push this guy out to that side. That makes him very killable in the future. Um, and in fact... Oh, hold on. I don't want to do it that way, though. I want to be here, because I think what I want to do with Anna is fire this shot. 
There, now we're blocking the blocking the thing correctly. We get to push you out to here and not have to worry about you later. And then I am going to kill this thing because I really, really just don't want to have to deal with it next turn. Okay, so we're on two enemies dead and one of them covered in acid at the end of the first turn. That feels like a pretty good start. Also, we're creating a lot of smoke clouds, which probably is to our benefit. This is very awkward. This guy is killing me. But I think I see it. Actually, I think I think it's a fairly simple turn. So we just need to fire uh, Anna's shot here. That kills this guy during the block uh, the block phase. Ooh, hold on. I want to reset the turn. I just realized something. I, before I do that, I want to take this shot, because now we have this thing available to us. These guys will both die as soon as the, uh, the Scion here dies, and because the Nanomech is armored, we can do stuff like this. Uh, I was pretty excited to get Abe, but he's turned out to be even better than I was hoping. So yeah, during the spawning phase, the Scion dies, these two immediately die from losing their last point of health. This puts us in a very, very good position. And, of course, it is now almost impossible for the Vec to attack from this side of the field, which is great. Oh, I wasn't even thinking about that. That's pretty cool, too, though. Did you notice we got 5 XP for that kill, but only 4 XP for this one? Do those guys give fractional XP that's not always represented the same way? Or do you get bonus XP for making Vec kill each other? If that's the case, I'd never noticed before, but... You know, maybe that is, in fact, the case. That's pretty cool, if it's indeed what's happening. Let's get rid of you. And then what I'd really like is to take the shot from here, kill this guy. And I think I would like that so much that I'm willing to coat my, uh, my tank in acid to make it happen. And remember, Acid only doubles the weapon damage, so he won't take double damage from the block. Okay, well, sometimes I feel like they're not even trying. Yeah, that was, uh, that was pretty alright. Sometimes I balk at killing seven enemies, because, I don't know, the number seven is just, it's just enough to sound like a lot to me. But uh, it turns out that it's, uh, it's really not that difficult. Okay, this is a bad item, but we will sell it. And, I mean, we can, we can have it equipped for the moment. We have an empty slot, and it's free. So buildings gain a shield after taking damage. Who knows, this might actually uh, save some power for us. So also, we got plus one free reactor, and we got a reactor. It's probably plus move, right? Like, I know his health is low, but also he's not really taking that much damage anymore. Four move and flying has been sufficient to get him everywhere we need him to go, though. And this will let us, um, this will let us do some more push shenanigans. Using him as a as a backstop first for people's pushes. The next reactor goes here. We take this and we put it in there. And this also, by the way, helps to justify the plus health on Abe. Because now he will be taking damage when we have Anna shoot near him. Alright. Going, like, really well. Well, I think this is going to be pretty easy. So it's, you know, the seismic activity, the VEC don't take that into account when calculating their turns. Which usually means you can, you can push them into the squares that are going to earthquake away and, uh, and deal with them pretty easily. We have leapers and we have this thing, but this thing can't actually get close enough to do much. If I just don't put anybody here, he doesn't get to attack on the first turn, so let's not give him a target.
Because I don't want him putting up rocks unnecessarily. The rocks are way more of a, an impediment to me than they are to the Vec. Alright, that building immunity once again looking real good here. So, let's just get rid of you. Nope, never mind. Can't do it that way. Gotta shoot from here. And hey, Abby actually gets to get a kill this way. He's, you know, he's gaining XP, slowly. We're about to max out Harold. You know, for the first time ever, I'm thinking, I wouldn't mind if I got a little, uh, a little plus grid defense on my guys here. I guess, you know, maybe I should have, like, boosted over to here. Because having all three of my mechs on this side of the canyon is maybe not awesome. I might regret that. You know, then again, maybe it's 100% fine. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna take the XP. Well, if I take the XP on Abe, I don't get to do a full block. Yeah, let's just let's just do this. Get a little too fancy. If I hadn't moved the mirror mech forward, which I did for essentially no reason, I could have had Abe here, and he could have taken the shot, gotten the XP. But I guess we still don't get to block all the spawns in that case because there's no way for Anna to get over here. Okay, and not only do we do our uh, our missions, we end up with no damage at all. Take that, Vec. Look at that. Flawless. Perfect. Without a scratch. Harold's right on the cusp of maxing out. Oh no, he did max out. That's right, he got a kill on the last turn. Plus one move? Okay, not mad about it. Again, I would have been actually very okay with uh, plus grid defense. We'll take what we can get. So, at this point, a power is probably roughly equal to a reputation because we're probably going to have to spend some of our reputation upgrading our grid defense just to be sure that we're safe. So, defend the train. Uh, I think this is going to be the easiest mission, probably. The train can be a little tricky sometimes. Especially since uh, it also, it counts as a friendly unit, not a building, so if Anna can't fire directly onto the train, she's actually in a little bit, uh, she's going to have a little bit of trouble protecting it. Hold on. If I leave somebody here, we're pretty much guaranteeing that the digger moves to here to attack. Am I fine with that? Yeah. Yeah, I think so, because we're just going to kill him on the first turn, because I hate him. Okay, that's an interesting setup. So an artillery shot to right here is pretty magical. It's unfortunate that the siege mech doesn't have one more move. So we get to this space to finish off the... Uh, the Leaper, that would be cool. We're going to have to move the Leaper out by shooting it with the uh, the Nano Mech, probably. I think I'm just going to do this. At this point in our development, putting acid onto a guy who has two health is pretty meaningless. Okay, they are taking it pretty seriously here with the spawns.
Yeah, that's awkward. The fact that we can push the rock into the building is a little, a little unfortunate. Wait, undo move. Hold on. Let's do this first. Then we move you on to here. Yeah, you know, we're uh, we're actually making our XP pretty quickly. I, I get a little worried when I do a lot of blocking that I'm reducing our uh, potential XP pool by too much. But I'm feeling feeling pretty okay about it here. Uh, so I think what I probably want to do is move you out of the way so that Abe can get this kill for the point of health. And then we just blow you up with the artillery mech. Okay, so we'll be at two, uh, two mech damage at the beginning of this turn. We might even be able to safely block a shot or something. Uh, provided they give us that opportunity, which it looks like they will not be doing. This feels pretty alright, though. Then we can get some XP for Abe. And hey, look at that. Zero damage again. <laughs> I may have overestimated the amount of trouble we were going to have with this island. It was making me feel like I should have gone to, uh... Should have gone to Pinnacle first, maybe. Alright, I don't anticipate the Spider Leader being a big problem. We have enough ways of dealing damage to multiple tiles that I think we can probably keep them under control. Uh, this is really not a great starting position for the artillery mech, unfortunately. We'll have to go, like, here. I kind of wish our artillery mech could fly. That would make some things easier. All right, we're getting some uh, getting some decent mercy from the uh, from the enemy movements here. So this shot is pretty good. We can hit this guy with acid first to get that kill. That gets us a lot of kills, and then the mirror mech goes like one, two, three, four, th hits this thing and this thing while blocking a spawn. Except, <clears throat> that doesn't actually work. And the reason it doesn't work is that this shot is going to move the mirror mech back a space. Which means we'll be one spot short of that. So instead, we give this guy the acid. We kill him with the mirror mech, maybe? Like, shooting from here. And then... Yeah, see, if we do something like that, it makes it a lot harder for us to put any damage. It makes it means we can't put any damage on the spider leader. Okay, so maybe we forget the alpha firefly. I'm getting too caught up in like, hey, I could kill an alpha on the first turn. Isn't that great? Maybe I should just focus on the spider leader. Because the more, the more time we give it to spawn spiders, the harder this is going to be. So maybe we use the... Nanomech to push this thing to here while hitting with the acid. Siege mech stands here, fires there, getting us an egg kill, doing a little bit of damage to this guy, doing a little bit of damage to the spider leader, and then the mirror mech can just do a not very threatening kill on the spiderling, I suppose. I think that puts us in a better long-term position. Yes, this guy has two health left. So I guess in terms of putting myself in a good position to attack, though, maybe this is the better play. And that does mean the one XP for the Spiderling doesn't go to Herald, which is... It's a small benefit, but it's a benefit.
Wow. They're, uh, really grouped up. So you're just attacking Harold, huh? I was going to say, uh, an artillery shot to here would be great, but we actually can't do that. Ah, uh, that sucks, because it would really be good. <laughs> yeah, I'm one space short of being able to do that. Hmm. That does complicate things. So we can fire an artillery shot to here. It's really not good at all. Uh, and unfortunately, with the nanomech way off in the corner here, it cannot uh, push Anna into a position that's useful at all. What if I just shoot to right here? Killing this guy opens up uh, the move for Harold. He can get out to here somewhere. We don't have a way of killing the Alpha Firefly directly, but Harold has enough health that he could block it. Right, right now, part of the problem is Harold actually can't move. He's surrounded on all four sides. This artillery shot frees him and allows him to like make a move where he could leap to here. That would cost us a power. But we don't have another way of dealing with this guy, so actually we're going to lose that power anyway. And it would mean Harold gets to block this shot with his face, which is... fine. It also means that we uh, do not get to deal any more damage to the Spider Leader this turn. Which sucks. A lot. But I think is unavoidable. I guess that's not true. I can do, I can do push damage. You know, if I just have Harold, we actually can avoid taking building damage entirely. If I have Harold come down here and kill these two, then I have an angle now that lets me do that. We still, we just barely need to touch the spider leader. It's not the end of the world if he survives this turn and we're getting no new spawns because there were so many enemies on that turn that there weren't a lot of spawners. Yeah, this is definitely a better play. Wow, Harold's friends with gravity. Just name dropping all over the place. It's a little uncouth, but you know, impressive. All right, we probably want to use the siege mech to kill this thing this turn because I'm tired of looking at it. Uh, Harold can. Harold cannot kill the Spider Leader. We could use Abe to uh, splat this thing against the mountain, which would open up the kill. But if I do that, I'm allowing one of these two attacks to happen, right? Which I think is uh, pretty unacceptable. So maybe I do this. So now we are we are only a single push away from killing the spider leader. I don't have to devote an actual attack to it next turn. And that lets us clean up a couple more baby spiders. So we get two spawns plus a spider plus a spider. Oh man, those are bad spawns. But all we have to do is successfully push the spider leader into something. To, uh, to finish it off. You suck and I hate you. He stinks and I don't like him. Oh my god, stop with the webs. Alright, so. Artillery shot to here. Solves a lot of our problems. <laughs> the vast majority of our problems are now solved. This guy does 5 damage when he attacks. Which is real bad. <laughs> Means that dealing with him is not optional. And I, Harold can do it. No, Harold cannot do it because... Oh, I was going to say the nanomech can't push this guy because look, these things are in the way. But he can just push one of those into him. So like Harold can just clear this dude with a jump, right? 
No. No, Harold cannot clear that guy with a jump. Where would I jump to? Jumping to here doesn't do it. No, yeah, no, nor does jumping to anywhere else. We have to push this guy, and then... We clear the spider leader with a jump. There we go. All right, we had a couple of situations there that I was not 100% sure how we were going to get out of. Plus three grid defense. You know? The only time I've ever been happy to see it. So we're not going to take a new pilot, because I like my plus reactor plus grid defense pilot. So I think we just... Uh, I don't really want the flamethrower. I think we just take four grid defense. Because if we get to 30 grid defense right now, we can stop thinking about this. In theory, it's better to do it at the end, but also... Um, yeah, it's better to do it at the end, but also, depending on how the third or fourth islands go, we might not actually have the opportunity, because, right, we could have a, like, a disastrous thing happen where we lose six power over the course of an island. So maybe we're best off just getting it right now. Now, it does say that the, the overpower bonus will decrease the higher your grid defense gets. I'm a little worried that we might not get two grid defense per point all the way up to 30. Because right now, if we did this, it would be... It's looking like it's going to be three reputation gets us to 30, and then we have enough reputation to buy a reactor and, like, smoke bombs, which is an okay item. If it ends up being four power and we just get a reactor, that's not considerably worse. Okay. Yeah, because that just means we don't get the smoke bombs, but we actually... Well, I could still... You know what? I'm going to trade the auto shields for the smoke bombs. That's right. I forgot. We had those auto shields that I don't actually want. We'll put this on... Wow, that feels wrong. <laughs> let's move... Let's move the nanobots to you. Alright, so we'll install the extra reactor on you, because I do want this powered. It's very helpful. And you can... Yeah, that seems pretty good. You know, I think we're in a good spot here. So, that is going to be it for us for today. Thank you all so much for watching. And come back next time. I think all we have to do is make it to the end of the fourth island without letting the Vec blow up any uh, time pods. And we're all set here, so I'm very excited. Come back next time to see me do that definitely successfully. No mistakes. Ever. Because that's just always how we do. And we'll see you then.